Hey there, so today we're going to be upgrading the HP Victus 15 here, and I'm going to be putting in the 2 terabyte SSD that I said I was going to put in earlier, and I also decided that I might as well upgrade it with this 96 gigabyte kit of RAM. It's complete overkill for a system like this, but what we're about to do is we're going to trick this thing out and turn it into an absolute powerhouse. Of course, we are having this 2 terabyte SSD going in here. I was considering going with a 4 terabyte, but right now SSD prices are just just absolutely brutal so i'm trying to avoid having to buy anything new that's too expensive i'm hoping prices will start to come down towards the end of the year here but we're just gonna pop this bottom panel open by just unscrewing all these screws and now that we're actually in the entire upgrade process is going to be extremely easy underneath this shroud here is our ram and that's going to be very very easy to access very easy to upgrade but you get this system by default remember that it only comes with one single stick of eight gigabytes but no matter what it's worth opening this system up and upgrading it my recommendation is 32 gigabytes bare minimum that you should go with is 16 96 is honestly absolutely overkill but we're going for it anyway now to upgrade the SSD, we just need to pop out this 512 gigabyte one. Unfortunately, the system only has the one SSD slot and it has no second M.2 or SATA port anywhere, which means we're very limited in terms of upgradability. And by the way, look at how tiny this SSD is. Absolutely minuscule. It makes sense. It's only 512 gigabytes, so it only essentially has the one chip on the board. But when you compare it to the one that we're putting in there, there's definitely a noticeable difference. It's a shame that we only have the one M.2 slot to work with because if we had a second one, it would be very easy to go up to four terabytes all the way up to even eight terabytes if you went with two four terabyte SSDs. That's one of the benefits of going with a mini PC that has more expandability or a more expensive laptop that has that extra expandability. Still, in general, not a bad situation at all. We got two terabytes of storage and we now have 96 gigabytes of RAM to work with. With. Okay, so now that we have the entire system closed back up, we can start it up. But remember, we only have the one SSD slot, which means that we are going to have to reinstall Windows. So I'm going to need to get a bootable USB so that we can boot in and actually install Windows. And we can see how difficult the process is going to be here because with some systems, when you're reinstalling Windows, it can be a huge hassle in terms of drivers. So I want to know just how much of a pain this system is going to be so let's go through the entire boot up process okay so it was a little annoying to get here but we are now in the install screen and i'm just going to delete all of these other installs that i had this already had windows on it but obviously it was installed on another system so because of that it was kind of just showing up as it already had windows but it wanted a bit locker an encryption key but i'm just completely wiping it all right we got windows installing so now we're going to go through the entire driver installation process we'll see if we can even get wi-fi on here i might need to hook up an ethernet okay so i'm having an issue where the wi-fi isn't working so we're going to get ethernet hooked up to this okay so it has been several hours later I ended up running into an issue where it wasn't just the Wi-Fi that was having issues. It was the Ethernet as well, where every time I would plug in the Ethernet cable, it would say it's connecting to the network and it would just be stuck trying to connect to the network and it just never would actually connect and that actually prevented me from ever continuing the windows installed of course i just had to open up the command line and i could bypass all of those things but what i actually had to do was i had to use my usb c adapter that has an ethernet port to even get internet on the system so i can update it download all the drivers thankfully i could download all the drivers directly through the windows update manager so i didn't have to look for anything on the hp website but I did need to have the internet connection for all of it to work, which means that if you're doing this kind of upgrade and this is your only device, I would recommend getting some kind of USB ethernet device just so you have a way to get internet on here. But I have everything set up now so we can actually fully utilize the system. You can see here in the task manager that we have the full memory capacity accessible. You can see we have the two terabytes of storage. We pretty much have turned this six hundred dollar laptop into a kind of killer pc you're gonna struggle to find any tasks to even utilize this much memory and look i understand it's just six cores and 12 threads but there's
there's a lot you can do with six cores and 12 threads. It was not that long ago that a lot of people were doing their work on less than six cores and 12 threads. I remember editing 1080p video on 4 core 8 thread processors and thinking that was the greatest experience ever. The fact that we scoff now at 6 cores and 12 threads is kind of crazy to me. So what I wanted to do with this setup is I'm going to essentially use this laptop to make a full production setup where I could just run my entire channel off of this because I want to show you guys just how much power these budget laptops have in them. So stay tuned for that. I'll catch you guys in the next one.